Hi, everyone. Good to see you again. I'm Anne Marie Green. And I'm Vladimir Dutit. We begin this morning with the latest out of Washington, where six House committee chairs are warning Attorney General William Barr they will issue subpoenas tomorrow for special counsel Robert Mueller's full report. Today marked the first deadline they had given the Attorney General to hand over the report. And also on the Hill, the House Oversight Committee is expected to issue subpoenas today, looking into whether White House security clearances were granted despite major concerns. Longtime White House employee Trisha Newbolt told the committee that she helped deny clearances to about 25 Trump administration officials but that those denials were overturned. And that includes those for the president's daughter, Ivanka, and her husband, Jared Kushner, who are both presidential advisors. Paula Reed is at the White House with more insight into the whistleblower's claim. Today he said, I want to come down and I want to have peace in the Middle East and I want to do criminal justice reform and I want to do all these wonderful things. And his life became extremely complex. <laughs> President Trump praised Jared Kushner shortly after news that Congress might subpoena details surrounding his security clearance. Kushner dodged questions about it in a rare interview last night. I've been accused of all different types of things, and uh, all of those things have turned out to be false. I disclosed all my holdings to the uh, Office of Government Ethics, and what I did with that is they told me what to divest, what to keep, what rules to follow. The president's daughter and son-in-law are among several prominent White House officials targeted by the House Oversight Committee as it probes irregularities in the security clearance process. Trisha Newbold has worked in the White House for the past 18 years. Newbold told lawmakers she and other career staffers denied security clearances for approximately 25 Trump administration officials, only to have those recommendations overturned. The 25 people were not named in the memo of Newbold's testimony released Monday by Oversight Chairman Elijah Cummings. Now, the things that she has told us are shocking to the conscience. The testimony did reveal that staff denied the security clearance requests of two current senior White House officials who had disqualifying factors, including foreign influence and outside activities. But those concerns were overruled by senior officials. In a statement, Republican Jim Jordan accused Democrats of releasing cherry-picked excerpts from Newbold's interview, noting her 25 examples include non-political officials, such as a government custodian. Paula Reed is at the White House and joins us now. So, Paula, this is not the first time the White House security clearance process has come under scrutiny. But put this in context for us. How unusual is it for an administration to go against recommendations regarding national security? Well, it certainly happens. The president can overrule any denial that's made by staff. But here, Newbold's concern is not so much that senior officials were overruling her decisions, it's how they went about it. She said, look, I understand the president has the power to override my decision or other staffers' decisions, but when they do so, there's a process, there is protocol. She says when a decision is overruled, there should be documentation about why they have decided to overrule that decision, and they also need to memorialize in some fashion that they accept certain risks they're taking on, certain red flags that have been identified in the process and her concern is over the past two years she has not seen that protocol followed. So today the House Oversight Committee is expected to issue its first subpoenas related to this issue of clearances. What are Chairman Elijah Cummings and the House Democrats what are they hoping to accomplish here? Well, this is all part of an ongoing investigation by newly emboldened House Democrats into the security clearance process at this White House. Earlier this year, they made a sweeping request of the White House for various witnesses and documents, and they say the White House has not provided a single document or a single witness. Now, I've talked to sources, though, here at the White House, and they've confirmed the White House has tried to make some concessions. They have provided a briefing for lawmakers to talk about this process. They've also allowed lawmakers to view certain documents privately. This is a pretty secretive, confidential process. However, uh, Cummings says that he's not getting everything he needs and that in order to do his job, he has to issue these subpoenas. But on the other side, Republicans argue that he's cherry picking Newbold's testimony, trying to pick various pieces, put it all together to make it look like there is sort of mis misdeeds uh, connected to the security clearance application process. But Jim Jordan, for example, says, look, you're lumping in Jared's, Jared Kushner's security clearance with that of a custodian. You're trying to make it look like there's more than actually happening here. Uh, meanwhile, Paula, let's talk about this. Six House committee chairs have told uh, Attorney General William Barr they will issue subpoenas tomorrow 
for the special counsel's full report. They initially gave Barr, as you know, a deadline of today. So what's going to happen next? Probably not much. The attorney general has specifically said he will release a longer version uh, of his Mueller report summary in mid-April. So for Democrats to demand that it happen in the next 24, 48 hours, this is just a little bit of political theater here, Vlad. I don't think any judge would actually take, uh, take up that subpoena as a serious issue until the attorney general has had time to go through this 400-page report and vet what additional materials he can make public. But he's made it clear he's not releasing the full report. He is likely to withhold a certain grand jury information, likely information that is confidential or classified, and some information about people who were not charged. That is the policy of the Justice Department. Now, once he releases this longer summary in mid-April, then I think you're going to see additional requests for the full report. And then I think this issue will be ripe for the courts to decide whether or not the public uh, has the right to see this full report. So the president has sort of gone back and forth in his messaging in regards to the release of a full report, saying that he would love the report to be made public. But, you know, it's really up to the Justice Department, which I suppose could be both factually accurate, but I think the president could probably demand that it be released if he wants it released. Nonetheless, currently, what is the White House position on this? The official position is that they are deferring to the attorney general, and they've been pretty consistent about that over the past few months. But the president uh, has recently expressed sort of mixed motions about making this full report public. I think he saw the, the headline on this as a win for him. There was no conspiracy. There was no collusion, according to special counsel Robert Mueller. But he and his attorneys are smart enough to know on the other question about whether or not he tried to obstruct this investigation. There is, as special counsel Robert Mueller put it, evidence on both sides. And certainly the president does not necessarily want that evidence uh, out in the public, particularly as we get closer to 2020. So while he's not uh, calling or demanding for the full report to be released, officially he's deferring to his attorney general while at the same time sort of trying to undermine the legitimacy of this investigation and the people calling, uh, for example, you know, Jerry Nadler, those calling for this full report to be released. He's hearkening back, for example, to Nadler's stance on the Star Report and not wanting that released. Uh, that was one of his tweets today. So again, mixed messages but officially they're deferring to the attorney general who under the law has the authority to decide how much of this is released if people disagree with his decision they can take it to the courts we'll, we'll see what happens with those subpoenas tomorrow paula thank you